perched on the edge of a mountain, overlooking a river valley over two hours by bus from Marrakesh, is the 500-year-old tomb of a mysterious rabbi from afar, Shlomo ben Lahens, the son of the snake. Once home to hundreds of Jewish families, the Eureka Valley's only Jews in more recent times were the Alfasis. After losing his mother and wife, Hanania Alfasi, a Jewish monk, maintained an animated if solitary vigil at the shrine of Rabbi Shlomo until his own death in 2012. <laughs> On for the for the rabbi. What did Tiba Shkuri say? Tiba did get them in the America. But she can't sleep with him. Ah, she blamed the sifar. When the Jews they were in Uruk, oh, she blamed the sifar. Several years ago, Hananya nervously wondered who would preserve the tomb after he passed on. Inshallah, he said, may it be God's will that someone will come to protect the tomb. Clown if he will, he will not kill. Why has he made a mock bridge? He said that, uh, you know, the, when the people, they were here and after when they left, if he wasn't here, everything would go down. Now, through the efforts of Diarna, not only is the shrine being digitally preserved in perpetuity, but so too the memory of Hananya. Welcome to Insights, a Diarna series spotlighting interesting Jewish sites across the Middle East and North Africa. Insights is being made possible by a generous grant from the Elizabeth and Oliver Stanton Foundation. Many legends surround the life of Rabbi Shlomo. He appears to have come from Israel to southern Morocco, crossing North Africa by mule, in the manner of many emissaries of his day on fundraising missions for yeshivot or study halls in the Holy Land. The monk Hananya would tell of how the rabbi purportedly transformed into a snake in order to protect himself from bandits. Another account has the mystical rabbi being banished to a snake pit for three days by the local magistrate for not clearing the fundraising with him first. The magistrate ordained that if Rabbi Shlomo was still alive after three days, then that was proof that his mission was God's will, and he would be let free. At the end of the third day, the community and the magistrate gathered around the pit and were surprised to find the rabbi not only unscathed, but to witness the snakes surrounding him as guardians. Rabbi Shlomo's life, death, and how he came to be buried here, outside a Jewish cemetery, remain the stuff of legends. As for the valley, as late as the 1950s it boasted two synagogues, several Jewish schools, and some 300 families. Many members of the community would make hilulot, or pilgrimages, to this shrine, as well as other graves of righteous men and women, in order to celebrate holidays and to request through prayer for the righteous in heaven to intermediate on their behalf to God. Hananya became enmeshed in this Moroccan saint worship tradition through his mother, Lala Saada Al-Fasi, who guarded Rabbi Shlomo's tomb after most of the community emigrated to Israel in the 1960s. After her death in 1978, Hananya placed her remains just outside the entrance to the rabbi's tomb in what has now become a pilgrimage site unto itself. His service to the rabbi was seldom interrupted in over three decades. When Hananya and his wife Yamna tried to move to Israel to join the rest of their community, he suffered a stroke right before they were set to leave. Hananya interpreted the timing, and his recovery, to be a sign from the rabbi not to leave his post. The shrine evolved over the decades of the Alfasi's care. 
Access was once limited to a four-mile dirt donkey path, which has since been paved. In 1976, donors from around the world built an elegant marble tombstone over the site. Later, a wealthy woman, who believed her prayers at Rabbi Shlomo's tomb had been answered, funded the renovation of the tomb complex, adding several guest rooms for visitors. While Hananya, the living memory and last vestige of the region's ancient Jewish community, has passed on, the shrine endures, both in its remote physical origins as well as online.